Good evening, good evening, everyone. Praise be unto God, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm praying that you are staying safe out there. I'm praying that you are uh, wearing your mask and trying to limit the amount of contact you come into with people, which is why uh, we have been shut down for these last couple of weeks, but I wanna make sure that everyone is staying safe. That is my number one concern is for everyone to stay safe. And so we have been blessed and privileged to not have any members die from COVID. And we just thank God for that. And we thank God that the Lord has blessed us, oh God, for allowing us to have this mercy and this grace. It did not mean that none of us didn't deserve to die from it. It just means that God showed us his unmerited favor on it. And I, I just wish somebody out there would just say thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to live as far as we've done. Throughout this pandemic, throughout the COVID-19, through these perilous times, we just thank God that you've allowed us to live. My children are alive, the people around me, the job that I'm at, and everything is just going the way I need it to go. And even though it's not going the way I needed to go, it's still working on for my good. So I just wanted to thank God for uh, just allowing us to make it yet another Wednesday to Bible study, another day of just being alive, another week of being able to get closer to our breakthrough. And so we're going to start with the word of prayer and then we're going to jump into the word of God. And I promise you, I am not going to keep you very long. Heavenly Father, we pause just to say thank you. Thank you for just blessing us, oh God, and keeping us, oh God. God, we thank you for this day, for it is considered the present. That's why it is a gift unto us, oh God. And we thank you that your mercies are new every day, God. And we ask that you would uh, uh, allow us to acknowledge your power in our lives, oh God. The fact that you kept a hedge of protection around us, oh God, that you have uh, 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 allowed us to get through many dangers seen and unseen, oh God. God, we just ask right now, God, that you would touch our hearts, oh God, as we are here on Wednesday and we're thirsty for a word. And you said, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would fill us up. Uh, we got a word on, on Sunday, but now midweek uh, on a hump day, we need you to fill us up again. God, so we know that this hellish world that we live in, God, we need a word from you, God. So I ask that you would sit me down as you raise up. Oh God, hide me behind Calvary's cross. Crucify my flesh. Consecrate the spirit in you that, that, that you will get the glory in everything that I say. Let my spirit speak instead of my flesh. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, you guys, uh, uh, we was talking this Sunday. It seemed to be a little bit rough of a message that God is a promise keeper. And I, I just really want to go back into that. And it's not going to be from the rough standpoint, but I just want you to understand where that particular promise came from. So we're going to be going to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I promise uh, I'm going to try to skip through this as much as possible and try to get to it, uh, get through it. Uh, as fast as we possibly can, uh, because this in itself uh, can preach and teach all by itself, uh, maybe two or three months uh, just with this particular chapter. But I just want to get through it just so you can understand where we are. And where we are is where Moses is uh, giving this proclamation unto the children of God in the wilderness. He's uh, getting instructions from God about what he's going to do uh, for his people. The promise that he gave to Abraham has passed down as an inheritance unto them that he's going to give them the land that's flowing with milk and honey. And, you know, we've been talking and preaching and teaching about uh, uh, possessing our promise. And so many people um, want to hear about the promise. So you want to hear what God said he was going to do for you. We we want to hear what God said he's going to uh, manifest in your life. And you've heard the prophecy and you want it to be fulfilled. And God is saying that I'm going to do it, but there's some prerequisites to it. And I need uh, to kind of explain and give you guys a little bit of um, understanding with that because so many of us want it by osmosis. 
And I'll say that again, so many of us want it by osmosis. And what does osmosis mean? We want it to come without any type of work. Uh, we want it to come without any type of trial. We want it to come just in our mind and just be downloaded like you download something on your computer. But it takes some time. It takes some hurt. It takes some pain. It takes some, some struggling. It takes some work. It takes some fighting. And, and, and there's people out there that know what I'm talking about because that's why you have expectations in this season because you're looking in this season because you know how much you had to fight. If it's darkest before daybreak, if it's about to happen, I know that I've had some dark days and some weary nights, so I know something big is about to happen. And see, most people don't understand that when we talked about the year 2020, so many people talked about double vision and people talked about uh, the Lord is about to do something big, but then coronavirus hit in, in, in March and so many people stopped proclaiming that something big was coming. But you don't understand when something as big as a pandemic comes, in these perilous times, then we know that God is going to pierce through this situation and give us the promise that he said that he was going to give us. And I wish there was somebody that would just give up, give, give, put a whole bunch of likes on there and say, I know that it's a whole bunch of things going on, but I'm still looking for my promise. And I know it's a bunch of uh, uh, hell going on around me, but I'm still looking for my promise. And I promise you, I'm not here to preach. I'm here to teach. But I need somebody to get excited about the fact that I still got a promise in a pandemic. And so many of us are looking down upon our lives and looking and, and we're taking inventory of our right now. But if they would have took inventory of their right now, they were in a wilderness. And even though God promised them a promised land, they were in a current situation which was not conducive of what God said he was going to do. It did not look like what God said he was going to do. It, it did not feel like what God said he was going to do. But he still said it and they still believed it and they still had faith and they still walked in their promise. Uh, I, but there's uh, uh, there's some there's some uh, some some uh, 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 things to this story that I want y'all to understand as we get into it. So I want to jump into it. So I'm giving you enough time then to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And um, we're going to go into the New Living Translation. And um, what I want you to understand is, like I said, Moses is proclaiming this to the people. Watch what he says. He says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep his commands that I am giving you today, the Lord God will set you high above all the nations of the world. Now, Paul, I want y'all to understand what he says. Listen, before he even gets started, he says, if. If means that it's a choice. And we talked about that last week about it being a choice. And, and most of us don't understand that you have to choose. And, and, and I talked about that on Sunday, that the Holy Spirit doesn't take and make you do things. It's called free will. God, uh, if he wanted to create robots, he could create robots. But he created man to be a living soul, to be able to make its own decisions. How do you know that? Because in Genesis, he uh, puts the, the 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 fruit of the the, unfru the forbidden fruit in the middle of the garden and says, "Do not eat of that fruit." He could have just not put the fruit in the garden, but he wanted it to be a choice. And so, what God is saying that you got to choose today. What are you going to do? And if you choose the wrong way, you cannot get upset if you don't get the promises. A lot of people don't get the promises that God said that he's going to do. And so we get upset and think that God is not a promise keeper, but he is a promise keeper. But the prerequisite is that you got to try to keep the commandments. And I know a lot of us are so... Uh, 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 talk, so caught up in the mercies and the grace of God and I understand we want to talk about we want to take God's grace for granted and we want to talk about God is a forgiving God but God is a God that honors your choices and some of us have made more bad choices than good choices but we're still asking for the good uh, uh, for the good outcome even though we made bad choices so he says listen if you if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all of his commandments that I have given you today. The Lord your God will set you up high above all the nations of the world. In other words, he's saying that the world 
if we do what we're supposed to, the world should be taking their dictation from us. We shouldn't, we shouldn't allow the world to dictate what we do. We should be dictating to the world what God is doing. And I just want to pause right there for a moment because I just want somebody out there to understand that uh, uh, it's okay to be different. It's okay to do something that's opposite of what the world is doing. It's okay uh, uh, to be ostracized for God. He told us that he was going to set us apart. He told us that we were the uh, 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 the flavor and the, the fruit of the world, the light of the world. He already told us that we were the salt of the earth. He already told us that, they, that he sanctified us and that we would be set aside. And so that means the world should be taking their dictation from us. We shouldn't be taking our dictation from from the world and that's where I believe a lot of us in the church have failed because we're too busy trying to follow after the world instead of being what God called us to be and walk in our in our only way that God called us to be and that's to live after him and do what God has called us to do under our own convictions of God and we try to make our life look like their life when God says we're supposed to be set apart that's the problem that happened. Watch what happens with Peter. Peter, uh, as Jesus gets snatched up, uh, they recognize Peter because Peter been with Jesus too long. And, and the problem is when you've been with Jesus too long, people should be able to point you out in the middle of a crowd. Peter is trying to hide and disguise and act like he don't know Jesus. And he's trying to deny Jesus, but he can't deny him because he got Jesus all over him. And that's where that's what a lot of us don't understand. You should be able to see Jesus all over you. People should be able to see Jesus and say something's different about you. Something's different about the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act. There's something about you because if you spend enough time with Jesus, then Jesus should be all spewing all over you. And so many of us don't understand that the world should be able to see that there's a difference and there's nothing wrong with people not inviting you to the party. See, that's the reason why a lot of us don't understand why God does that because they didn't invite you to the party because they see too much anointing on you. And see, that's the problem. We want to be invited to the party, but we want the, we want the anointing as well. Sometimes the anointing separates you from the people you used to be with because sometimes unless they want to get oily, they can't get around you. And some of them are really convicted just because you're in the room. And so many of us are so busy trying to conform to the world. He said, listen, I set you apart that you're supposed to be above all the other nations. He said, I, I, I set you to a point where they're supposed to be looking up to you, not looking face to face to you, because I set you to be different. He says, listen, I, I, I'm not going to get through all of this. Uh, he says, you will experience all these, I'm in verse 2. He says, you will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Uh, he says, listen, uh, if you obey. Now, here's what a lot of people don't understand. He talks about the commandments. He says you got to fully uh, uh, go after it and because our flesh is weak. That's why the Bible says they all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. None of us are, are capable of following all of the commandments. More, oh, uh, none of us are capable because we're in our flesh. So when somebody tries to act as if they're perfect, try to act as if they arrived, as they try to act as if they got it all together, then you'll find out that there's failures that's right behind them and they don't want to talk about it because they have uh, uh, covered those things up and because you can't see it to the naked eye then they try to portray perfection but God says listen all have sinned and come short of the glory so when he's talking about the commandments what he's trying to say is that I'm looking for you to make an effort I'm looking for you to make an effort to try to do the right thing because God honors your intentions he says listen if you're trying to do right I understand you might slip up and I understand he says I need you to repent and turn from your ways and go and keep on going in the right direction. That's why you'll find imperfections in all of the men and women in the Bible because God says, listen, I still can use unperfect people. My sister in the ministry, uh, my sister and sister in the ministry said God can still use broken crayons. Broken crayons steal color. 
So what God is trying to say is, listen, you, you don't have to be perfect, but I, what I'm looking for you is to give an effort. He said, I'm looking for you to try. I'm looking for you to make a choice and keep on making more good choices than bad choices. And when you do that, he says, these are the things that I'm going to give you. Watch this. He says, your towns and your fields will be blessed. He said, your children, I'm in verse four. He said, your children and your crops will be blessed. He said, the offsprings of your herds and your flocks will be blessed. He said, your fruit baskets and, and, and breadboards will be blessed. He says, Wherever you go, he says, whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. Then will uh, uh, then they will attack you uh, from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. He says, listen, what I'm trying, what he's trying to say is, listen, I'm, I'm not just going to bless your finances. Uh, because some people finances is not an issue. Uh, some people got their finances together. He says, but when your enemy attack you, he says, I'm not, I'm just not going to shield you. And I'm just not going to bless you with uh, uh, tangible and financial things. He says, I'm going to bless you with a shield of protection over your life where you, where you don't have to worry. Watch this. You don't have to worry about your enemies attacking you. And I just want to tell somebody you're giving the enemy too much energy in this season. And you got to let the enemy know that I'm protected. Protected. I wish somebody up there would put a whole bunch of likes and say, and put a whole bunch of hearts and say, I'm protected. I'm covered. I'm already shielded by the Holy Spirit. God has already given me protection because I'm trying my best to go in the right direction. And God knows my heart. He knows what I'm doing. I have pure intentions of following Jesus. And yes, I'm doing some bad things in my life, but I'm trying my best to do the best thing, to, to be the best believer that I can be. And God is trying to tell you that if you don't don't worry about your enemies. I got it covered. He says, I'm going to have them fleeing seven ways. They're going to come from, they're going to come at you one way, but they're going to flee seven different ways. Watch this. Uh, he says, um, in verse nine, he says, if, if you obey the commands of the Lord, your God, and walk in his ways, the Lord will establish you as a holy people as he swore he would, then all the nations of the world will see that you are the people claimed by the Lord and they will stand in awe of you. The Lord will give you prosperity. No, no, let me pause right there. He says they will stand in awe of you. And, 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 and so what a lot of people don't understand is what he's talking about. He says they will be in amazement. And have you ever had people have you ever had people that are amazed at your outcome? Yeah, I, 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 you ever had people that are surprised that you are where you are? Uh, do you ever have people say, man, I'm, I, I didn't think you was going to grow up to be this way. I didn't think you were going to turn out to be this way. And you know there's a lot of people because there's some people that turned on you when you were younger. There were some people who were turned on you while you were in your transitional phase. There were people who turned on you just yesterday and they didn't understand what they were dealing with. They didn't understand the anointing that they were trusted with. They didn't understand the jewel that God had placed in their life and they mishandled you. And so a lot of people don't understand that they are in awe of you because they did not expect you to be who God called you to be and the outcome is better than what they expected and that's why I can sit proudly and be excited about what God has done in my life because I didn't even expect me to be where I am is there anybody out there that can tell God thank you because I didn't expect to be where I am I didn't expect to be who I am I didn't expect to be better than certain people in my life when I looked in my childhood there were certain people who had both parents and and I saw them living a certain way, but they got the, uh, 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 and I expected uh, uh, my life to turn out worse than theirs. But thanks be unto God, God has allowed me to have a peace of mind. Listen, I'm not talking about material. I'm talking about having a peace of mind. I'm talking about being able to be victorious in, in my mindset because you're so busy worried about the next check and the next bill and the next financial breakthrough that you ain't really seeing what God has blessed you with right now, which is called the present and the mercy that he gave you on today. I got a peace of mind and I'd rather have a peace of mind than a piece of property. Is there anybody out there that can say thanks be unto God that I might ha I might not have the property yet, but I still got a peace of mind and God is working on my mind first. See, that's what people don't understand. 
is that what God was doing in the wilderness is that he was bringing Egypt out of them. Uh, he, brought, he brought them out of Egypt, but he had to take the Egypt mentality out of them. And the reason why God got you in the wilderness right now is because he got to take that mentality out of you. Because you still don't think you deserve what God has given you. And true, you don't deserve it, but it's a, it's a reason why you should possess it and give God praise for it. Yeah, uh, because God says, listen, I already promised these things to you because of your sacrifices and your obedience unto me. That's what this text is saying. He says, listen, if you be obedient and try your best to do what I've called you to do, then these are the things that I'm going to bless in your life. I'm going to allow blessings and, and, and overflow to come in your life and double to come in your life. But you got to be spiritual enough to be able to listen to what God is saying. Here's the problem with that because most of us don't understand that the only way you can walk by faith is to have faith and the only way you can have faith, the Bible says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It didn't say hearing TikTok. It didn't say hearing Facebook. It didn't say hearing Instagram. It didn't say hearing the next YouTube sensation. He says you need to hear the word of God for yourself and God is saying I'm trying to birth revelation in you and if you don't get in the word for yourself then God says, I can't give you an opportunity to walk by faith when you're faithless. And that's what God is saying. You, you got a more of an abundance of the world than the word. And that's the reason why you're in the predicament that you're in. And that's the reason why you're making the choices that you're making because you're not getting the word. And God is looking for you to get the word in you so that he can move and bless you like this. He says, listen, I'm not just blessing your field. He says, I'm not just blessing your harvest. He says, I'm not just blessing your house. He says, I'm blessing your mind. I'm blessing your body. I'm blessing your future. I'm blessing your inheritance. I'm blessing your kids. Kid. He says, listen, I'm trying to bless everything, but what I need you to do, the only way you can possess it, beloved, is that you actually have faith to believe it. He says, listen, um, the Lord will give you prosperity in the land that he swore unto your ancestors to give you. He says, bless you, blessing you with many children. Y'all, can I say that? Pause for two, just two seconds. That babies are a blessing. <laughs> uh, the babies are a blessing. I know we, you know, because we think that we don't have the finances, uh, 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 that we think that babies are a curse. But y'all, babies are a blessing. Y'all, every time, how, how many people out there can honestly say, that every time God bless you with a baby, he stretches your finances so that you can handle what he gave you. Yeah, I, I understand you, you thought you couldn't afford another baby, but uh, when you had the baby, instead of aborting the baby, God blessed you with the money to take care of the baby. And so many of us are so worried about having the baby and the finances. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Worrying about finances is the root of all evil. He says the love of money is the root of all evil. And so many of us, and I understand about being wise, and being wise stewards about your money. But so many of us will go against God because we're so worried about money and finances. Uh, uh, we'll take a gamble at the casino before we take a gamble on what God says. And that's another thing God... God is looking for us to take a gamble on what he says. And don't, if you don't know the outcome of the slot machine, if you don't know the outcome of the lottery, if you don't know the outcome of everything else you're gambling on, stocks and bonds, and, and, and you don't know the outcome of that stuff, 401ks and, and all that stuff. But then when it comes time for you to gamble on God and, and, and pay your tithes and, and, and be a blessing to certain people, and God will tell you that I need you to take some money and take some, some things that you have and be a blessing on. Uh, uh, to somebody else. You don't want to take those chances, but you'll take chances in the world. Why is that? Because you got more flesh in you than you got spirit working in you. And God is looking for you to make the better choices because of the spirit man. I told y'all in Bible study a long time ago, the way you feed the spirit man is through the word of God. I know I heard you. I heard you. I heard you out there. It's through the word of God. The way you feed the flesh is through your everyday uh, experiences. When you're sitting down talking to uh, the people that are the black Israelites, that they're talking negative about God, you're feeding your flesh. When you're watching television, you're feeding your flesh. When you're listening to non-gospel music, you're feeding your flesh. When you're going out having conversations about God knows what, you're feeding your flesh. And I'm not saying that 
that we should be Mormons and, and, and sit down and only listen to gospel music and watch watch uh, 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 preaching and T.D. Jakes and uh, uh, Furtick on TV. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is there's got to be a balance so that you can make better decisions. And all you got to do is take evidence of your decision making and the fact that you're not walking in faith in so many different areas to know that your spirit man is weak. And what I'm trying to tell somebody out there is that when God is about to do the thing that he's about to do, and when God is about to manifest things in your life, the only way you can possess it is because you got to have faith enough to possess it. And that was the problem with the children of Israel when they were out in the wilderness. They could not possess it because they didn't have enough faith to believe that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. How do you know that? Because when they sent over the tribe, the 12 spies from every tribe, he said there was a, a tribe, a spy from every tribe when they went over to, to spy out the land, they came back with a majority negative report. And that was because they did not have enough faith. And see, that's the problem because if we don't spend enough time with God, then we don't have enough faith to do godly moves. See, we're looking for godly outcome, but we don't have enough God in us to make godly moves. And God is saying there's property that I'm going to have you buy in a season when it don't look like it. He says there's houses and there's, there's a, a business venues that I'm going to have you join in on. I'm, he said there's investments that I'm going to have you do. But if you don't have the faith to move and if you hold on to your one token and your, your one little uh, talent and God is saying I need you to go out and invest. He says you're not going to reap the benefit of being able to go out there and be blessed and allow me to uh, 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 manifest things in your life because you don't have enough faith to do it. Y'all watch what he said. He says, Lord, I'll give you prosperity in the land that's where your ancestors. He says, I'm blessing you with many children, numerous livestock and abundant crops. He says, the Lord will send rain at the proper time from his rich treasury in the heavens and will bless all the work you do. You will lend to many nations, but you will never need to borrow from them. If you listen to these commands of the Lord, your God, that I am giving you today, if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You will always be on top and never at the bottom. You must not turn away from any of the commands I am giving you today, nor follow after other gods and worship them. Listen what he's saying. He's saying, listen, I got so much in store for you. He says, but what I need you to do is I need you to get your faith intact. The reason why a lot of us have not been able to possess what God wants us to have is because God is just like a father that has a, a, a vehicle for his child. Uh, and if you set it aside and you set it in the garage and, and you already got a vehicle, but when you look down and see the immaturity of your child, you know that if I give them the muscle car, then all they're going to do with their immaturity is race up and down the street or race uh, uh, on the freeway and kill themselves. And the reason why God is saying that I can't give it to you right now, sis, and the reason why I can't give it to you right now, bro, is because you're not mature enough. And the reason why you're not mature is because you don't want to make the necessary sacrifices to be set apart from a world that don't care about you anyway. See, that's the problem. We're so worried and concerned consumed about the people around us that we don't realize that they don't care about us in the first place. The world didn't care about the children of God while they were in captivity in Egypt. God did. The world didn't care about them being in the wilderness. God did. And as they were in the wilderness, they got attacked. While they were in Egypt, they were being oppressed. Nobody cared about them other than God. So why is it that we worry about what the world says versus what God says and we don't want to be advocates for God and champions for God and, and people that are stand out for God, but, but because we don't want to be embarrassed by the world by saying that we love God and we stand for God. For God, I live, move, and have my very being. See, y'all, we got to stop being ashamed of God. We got to stop being ashamed of the God inside of us because we want to proclaim it when God is doing great things. But God says, listen, can't
can you can you still proclaim me when things are going bad when when things don't seem to be in the right direction they were in the middle of the wilderness God is saying, I need you to keep my commandments in the wilderness. You got me out here in the wilderness eating bread and manna. He said, listen, you got me out here uh, following a cloud by day and a, and, a, and a cloud by night. He says, you got me out here uh, 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 just, just wandering in the wilderness and you want me to still follow you? He said, yes, because I'm the same God that pulled you out of Egypt and I'm going to be the same God that's going to put you in the promised land. And what God is trying to say in this season is that I need you to have patience because when I do it, I'm going to do it in the due season. That's why he says in this text, he says, I'm going to let the rain come at the right time. He says, because the, the, the rain got to come at the right time of the year, because if it comes at the wrong time, rain turns into snow and the snow does not produce harvest. He says, I need the rain to come in the spring and in the fall. And he says, when I let it come in the spring, I'm going to allow it to come to a place where it's going to allow it to bless your life instead of it being a curse in your life. But you got to be patient Y'all, one of the problems we have that we're so busy worried about what uh, uh, we're so busy worried about not having what God say we don't need. I say that again. We're worried about having what God say we don't need because if God didn't supply, He says, "I supply all your need." My God shall supply all your need. That means He. It all means there's nothing left out. And so many of us are saying, well, I need a man. God says you don't need him right now. A lot of us say, well, I need a woman. I need a companion. God says you don't need him right now. And if you just wait on God, God will bless you in due season. That's what the Bible says. Ephesians 6 and 9, it says, be not weary in well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Your focus should be on doing well. Your focus should be on doing what God called you to do. Your focus should be on following the Lord. That's why the Bible says a single woman's cares are of the Lord. Uh, because while you're not with someone else, your mind should be on God because God will teach you how to handle the other person. Because in the midst of me being in a relationship, I got to listen to God in order to stay in a relationship. Y'all, that, that, that's, that, that's the only testimony that me and my wife have after being married for 25 years, being together for 30. Uh, the only way we can honestly say that we've been together is that God is the glue. And if there's anybody that know us out there, they know our testimony is that God has been the glue. It ain't that we ain't thought about divorce. It ain't that we ain't thought about breaking up. It ain't that we didn't think about letting go. But God has been the glue that held us together. So while you're single, sis, you you should be uh you shouldn't be single. You should be married to God. And the thing that you're supposed to do for your husband are the things that you should be doing for God. God says, listen, make me a meal. He says, God says, spend some time with me. Take me to the movies. Take me out. He said, listen, I need you to be focused on me. And when the time comes, he'll allow you to shift the energy. Whoo! I wish I had somebody that would understand what the Lord is saying. He says, I will shift the energy. He says, the energy that you gave to me, he says, the single woman's cares are of the Lord, but a marriage woman's cares are of her husband. And the reason why he does that is because he wants you to, to, to practice on him. He said, if you put me first, if you make sure that I'm taken care of, if you make sure that uh, uh, you paying your tithes and, and, and paying tithes ain't about money. Paying tithes is about where your mindset is. He says, if you can, if you can get your mindset together, then you can worry about your husband because if you're so busy worried about you and being independent, how can you be married and independent? That don't make sense. The Bible says the two shall become one flesh. You should be together. You can't be independent. So if you get so caught up on your independence, you're going to mess around and stay independent. God says, listen, I need you to depend on me. You can never be independent because being independent means you don't need me. See, and God says, if you depend on me, then God will allow you to have somebody else that you can share as y'all both depend on God. I don't even know why I went there, but the Lord knows. He knows what he's doing. But um, listen to what, we, what we're saying here. Um, um, he says, these now, in, the, in the, the name of this, it says the blessings for obedience. But then when you get, when you get down, and I, I don't have enough time for this. Maybe I'll follow this up on next week. Um, the curses for disobedience. 
So we'll get into that next week, and I, I, I know I don't have enough time, but I need you to understand that, yes, I still today, I want to say it again, God is a promise keeper. Uh, he's going to bless you in the field. He's going to bless you going and coming. He says, I'm going to bless everything in your life, but I need you to be obedient. And there's uh, a blessing for obedience. And there's a blessing for biting your tongue. There's a blessing for sitting down on things you wanted to stand up on. There, there's a blessing for uh, 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 not saying the things that you wanted to say or doing the things you wanted to do. I know it's hard because honestly, uh, uh, it's harder to not do than it is to do. Uh, uh, it, it, it's because this is your nature. It's in your nature to split somebody. It's in your nature to throw them hands. It's in your nature to cuss people out. It's in your nature. You, 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 you've done that all your life. You did that. He said, but when God says, he says, I'm, I'm trying to create a new creature in you. He says, I'm trying to create a new mind in you. He says, I'm trying to give a new behavior pattern in you. He says, that what, that's what I'm trying to do in you. And what if, if you just uh, listen to me and follow me, then I can pull you into a different position. And that position will allow you to possess your promise. Text says that this is a blessing for obedience. These are blessings for your obedience. And I just want to tell somebody out there that God sees you. Uh, there's some people out there that are looking and saying, God, do you really see my sacrifice? And God told me to deliver this message unto you that he sees your sacrifice. And I know there's so many other people that are doing crazy things and there's things that you desire to do, that your flesh wants you to do, that you have curved in this season. It, this season, you like, I, I got I got to get to God. I got too much God in me to mess around and go backwards. And, and, and yeah, you might have made a, a, a detour one time or two times, but you've been doing well. And God says, I see your sacrifice. He said, I see your tears. I see you wanting to go. I see you wanting to be a part. I see you wanting to fit in. And I see you wanting to just conform. But God says, I see your sacrifice. And there's going to be a blessing for your obedience. There's going to be a blessing for your sacrifice. And I just wanted to speak a word of encouragement unto you that all I need you to do is hold on. I know your hands are bloody. I know that they're going numb because you've been holding on for so long that it seemed like it's in vain. But God says, listen, what I need you to do is I need you to keep on holding on. I know how much you can handle. I know how much you can bear. He says, listen, it's coming. And when it comes, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow everybody's mind around you. He says, listen, when it comes, everybody's going to be benefit from it. And so I need you to continue to sacrifice because what I'm doing in your life is uh, things that are beyond your imagination. And that's what I want in my life is the will of God. And if God does it, I know it's going to blow my mind. And I know God's going to do some things that are going to bless people around me and the people that he assigned me to. And all I got to do is keep on sacrificing for God. That's my word and I'm out of here. And I just want to give you this word of encouragement that God is a promise keeper. He is a promise keeper. He promised you some things and there's some personal things that God has promised you. There's a, a, a there's his Logos word and then there's a Rhema word that God has promised you. He has come and told you in the form of a dream, in the form of a daydream and in the form of a vision. He has told you some things that he is going to allow you to do. In this season what I need you to do is step out on faith. I need you to work, write the book. I need you to uh, invest in the business. I need you to step out on faith. He said these are the times where I need you to understand that only the people that are the water walkers that are going to work. Uh, that These are the people that are going to go out and do things that they've never seen or done before. But you got to have the faith in you to believe it. And that's when you got to understand that your faith and your spirit man and your flesh has to be regulated. And so what God is saying is that when you know that your choices are going down and when you know more cuss words are coming out than praises, when you know that you're ready to split somebody at the at, at, every time you turn around then you know that your spirit man is getting weak and you need to get into your prayer closet. You need to get on the Bible plan. You need to uh, 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 continue to call a prayer partner and keep on uh, uh, encouraging. Look, go on a fast and pray and ask the Lord to help you in this season because what God is saying is that uh, 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 I, you can't give up right now. You can't give up right at the end. I, I, I brought you too far for you to let go now. That's a word from the Lord. And I want you to just be blessed on today that the Lord is going to keep you and bless you. And I just want y'all to continue to keep praying for the church and praying for me as the decisions 
and then I have to make about opening up the church just for the essential workers or either uh, open the church back up. Keep us lifted in prayer. We don't know which way we're going to go. I just want to make sure that everyone is safe. And that is my number one priority. Everyone knows that. I'm meeting with the staff. I'm talking to people about what we're going to do. I'm keeping my ear to the ground, listening to every time the governor makes an announcement. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that um, we're doing what's right for the church and for the people. Amen. What I need you to do is make sure that you're praying for everyone and pray for everyone that you know and love and, and pray for the church. I need you to pray uh, for us as the first family. I need you to just pray for the staff and the entire building. I know we are online and on live uh, and we're trying our best to provide a great content for you. Uh, and so we, we, we just ask that you pray for us. And I, as we pray for you, we're praying for our sick and shut-in list. We ask that all of our seniors, uh, if you know a senior uh, that is in need, we ask that you would let us know if they uh, need something so that we can be a blessing unto them. Uh, and I've been trying my best to call everybody and let everybody uh, tell me themselves what issues they may have. Uh, but uh, just let's keep on doing what we're doing. Prayer partners, getting together, Bible plans, uh, working together, just trying to uh, get everybody uh, ready. And so we ask that you would just continue to keep everybody lifted in prayer. Uh, and we're going to go forth in prayer right now. And then we're going to get out of here. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for what you have said and done uh, in this Bible study lesson. We ask that you would uh, allow us to study to show ourselves approved that we would uh, take this word and dissect it for ourselves and receive more revelation out of it, God. God, everybody gets a different revelation based on what they're going through in their own personal lives. So, God, we ask that you would give them the opportunity to read for themselves and get revelation for themselves, oh God, that they would build up their spirit, man, that they can make the right choices and the right decisions so that they won't bail out in this season on their blessings. And God, we just ask that you would give them a level of consistency and commitment in this season, that they would be committed and uh, dedicated to you, oh God, not to the church, but to you, God. And if you tell them to be dedicated to the church, then we know everything will be all right. God, so we ask right now that you would just continue to cover us and keep us, oh God, as we are going through these perilous pandemic times. And so we ask that you would continue to lift our spirits. Some people are struggling with the spirit of uh, depression. And so God, we ask right now that we cancel that demon that is trying to make us feel as if we're not worthy, if we're not enough, that we uh, 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 might as well just end it all or give up on everything. God, we ask right now that you would give us confidence and strength in you, that what you put in us is greater than anything that is attacking us. And so we ask right now that you would touch and deliver every single person that is under the sound of my voice that can hear us online. God, and I ask that you would just bless them in the field, bless them as they're going, bless them as they're coming. God, in every way, just bless them beyond their imagination. We love you, thank you, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you on today. We ask that you would share this post, uh, share this live, and, and, and let some people know that they can be encouraged. Uh, and then we want to just promote that the Lord is going to bless you, and we need to be more consistent, and we need to get ourselves together, team up with each other, because the, the Bible says that there's a blessing in unity, and God is looking for us to be unified in this season and i'm looking for god to do something uh, uh collectively i'm looking for god to not just bless me but bless everybody that's connected to me and we're all in this journey together so we all i would love for us all to get blessed together so that we can all sit at that table we were talking about about a month ago where we're sitting at the table uh, uh, uh the vision that god gave me that we're 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 fighting over the bill and so i'm just praying for that day that the lord is going to bless us where we can actually be at a table again uh, so we just thank God for that. And God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. Uh, keep on praying for us as we pray for you. Amen.